I want to talk about the Hard Rock Hotel collapse that killed three people, my observations and lessons learned. On October 12, 2019 in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Hard Rock Hotel construction site, the western side of the structure sheared off from the core of the building and collapsed, killing three workers and injuring two dozen others. The collapse was from the top of the roof structure on the 18th floor down to the 8th floor on the western side. Now, all of this structure was structural steel. The bottom f seven floors were poured monolithic concrete structure and they were unharmed. This hotel project is 350 rooms with a 40,000 square foot of retail and 500 space parking garage within the structure. It's a $70 million project. It's owned by a three part consortium of the developer Mohan Callas, uh, Citadel Builders, who is building the project, and All Star Electric, who are the electrical contractors. Um, at the time of the collapse, they had just finished the concrete pouring on the roof deck at the week before on October 5th. Now, this was a Saturday, and reports indicated that over 100 people were on site or working at the construction site during the accident. The project was in a fast-track mode as the owners wanted to finish the project for Mardi Gras 2020. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, OSHA did an overall investigation and determined the fault of the collapse. They stated in their report that they found numerous safety violations and fined 11 firms for a total of $315,536. The largest of these fines were imposed on the engineer of record for the design of the structure. He slipped engineering for the amount of $154,214. They cited in their report that number one, the 16th floor design, the floor beams were undersized in load capacity and structural steel connections were inadequately designed, reviewed, or approved. And as you see here on the structural drawings on the 16th floor, they have no tieback beams across the hallways and the spans are around 28 feet. Now. You, You'll see in the second violation that they state the western side of the exterior bay was not being tied to the rigid core section of the structure on for floors 9 through 15 between columns one column lines 1 through 9. Now you see that in the structural drawings they also did not tie them back on the 16th and 17th floor. The only place that they tied back across the hallway was on floor 15. So let's continue here. The third thing that they cited in their report was the cantilevers on the 17th and 18th floors exceeded the manufacturer's guidance for maximum span. As you see here, cantilevers on the floors that they, he's indicated the 17th and 18th. The fourth item is the engineers did not maintain the required accident prevention programs and created hazards for workers on floors 8 through 18 by inadequately designing, reviewing, and improving steel connections. The same thing that we've talked about. Now the general contractor Citadel Construction had the following OSHA violations. Number one, there was no shoring shop drawings were submitted to the city and no shoring drawings were on the job site. OSHA 1926-701A2, the drawings and plans showing the jack layout, form work, shoring, working decks and scaffolding shall be available at the work site. And 703B8, the design of the shoring shall be prepared by a qualified designer and the erected shoring shall be inspected by an engineer qualified in structural design. As you see here, there's typical shoring for the concrete decks and individual jack supports for the uh, floors underneath the poured concrete floors. Uh, in the high-rise projects that I was involved in, the shoring supply company provided the design for us and they were designed by a structural engineer. Uh, two, no shop drawings of product data from the decking company VersaDeck was on the job site. 
The drawings called for a 16 gauge VLI decking and Versatec was installed. Now VLI I believe is uh, Volcraft's decking. Um, number three, the steel support beams that support each floor near the edges of the building are too small and weak for the load. Number four, a steel beam did not have the metal stud fasteners to adhere the metal deck to the steel beam per the structural drawings. The steel beams must have steel studs attaching the metal deck to it. And you see a, a typical Nelson stud being welded to the deck, um, as you see here. Uh, you also see them on the structural drawings indicated on the exterior section. I believe one of the TV reporters in the New Orleans area had an expert uh, team look at the original drawings versus the permit drawings. And what they found out was, number one, they stated that the original drawings found in 2017 called for more support columns set closer together. But when they reviewed the permit drawings, they had longer distances between the support columns, a span that standard metal decking wasn't designed to handle. As you see here on the structural drawings of the 14th floor, uh, 24 foot, nine and a half inch span for the metal decking between the beams. That seems quite excessive for metal decking. However, you'd have to go to the metal decking load tables to confirm this design spacing. The second thing they found was maybe the shoring supports were removed too quickly after the concrete had been poured into the corrugated metal decks. Specifications called for shoring to be removed after 15 days, but in review, most of the posts were gone from the top floors when they collapsed just eight days later. Now OSHA's standard is one level of shores for the poured concrete deck and three levels of reshoring until the concrete has achieved the specified design strength. It looks like maybe only two floors for reshoring. As we see, uh, one of the workers takes the pictures of the jack support that is possibly failing. And this goes back to the OSHA number 1926 703 V8. The design of the shoring shall be prepared by a qualified designer and the erected shoring shall be inspected by an engineer qualified in structural designs. And then 701 D3, whenever single post shores are used in, in more than one tier, the layout shall be designed and inspected by a structural engineer. The third thing that they reviewed is that um, they found out that they may have changed the gauge of the metal decking from 16 gauge to 18 gauge, which was used. Now, this may have been submitted and approved by the engineer who was looking at the VersaDeck span table for metal, metal decking. As you see, the designer had called for 16 gauge VLI metal decking on the uh, drawings. And I believe VLI is Volcraft's product. In my review of the Western side collapse, the only floor that was tied off across the hallway with W16 by 26 beams was the 15th floor. There are no tiebacks on floors 8 through 14, nor there are tiebacks on floors 16 and 17. It appears as this western side of the building is like a floating section to the, to the structure. Um, and if you look at the spans and do some structural calculations here on the 15th floor, you'll see a span is approximately 25 by 28 and five and a half inch concrete thickness. If you take concrete 150 pounds per cubic foot, then that area that you're calculating, 350 cubic foot would be 52,500 pounds or 26 tons of weight for that pan decking to, to support so on this project, I'd have to somewhat lean towards OSHA's findings and say that he slip engineering is borderline their overall design of the building. However, I would state that a forensic investigating team would have to look at he, he slips uh, load calculations at all the columns and beams that make up the structure. So possibly the collapse uh, was a combination of engineering and construction uh, missing the uh, Nelson studs and pulling the reshoring out before it was uh, necessary.
Now, he slips, attorneys deny any wrongdoing and state that OSHA's report is unwarranted and not supported by facts and beyond the jurisdiction of OSHA's statutory authority. So in this case, it may be that there just needs to be a forensic engineer review it to back up OSHA's findings. Uh, the owner, Mohan Callis, has sued he slip engineering into contractors for $12 million. The city of New Orleans has sued the, the developers, uh, Callis and, and owners, for recovering costs for cleanup and security around the collapsed building as of July 2020 was totaled at $16.4 million. But the question I have, could this collapsed building been rebuilt? As you look at the structure, the core of the building appears to be intact. The collapsed area appears to be a floating structure as the only tiebacks to the main core section were on the 15th floor. You know, add redundancy to the structure with tiebacks from the western side to the core of the building on each floor from floor 9 through 18. Also add additional columns and beams as shown on each floor to lessen the span of the decks. Additionally, I would have had a forensic engineer review all the steel to steel connections of the existing structure and then have him review the overall design. Uh, nevertheless, we have three people dead and a dozen injured. So what do we learn from this catastrophe? Uh, number one, provide a full-time quality control inspector and qualify him and see if he's experienced in this type of work. Now, I just was reviewing the Tropicana Casino Resort garage uh, collapse that happened in 2003 where they did have a quality control inspector on site but he missed some rebar installation so qualify your guys um, and number two quality control checklist uh, we have one on our our company so i'll get into that in a separate uh, video number three periodic inspections by the structural engineer of record uh, have money in the budget for him to come out during the construction of the project and to make sure that uh, it's in compliance with his design and then qualify all your design professionals. And then number five, provide experienced and qualified construction management services on all your projects. Thank you.